हेलो एवरीवन सो वेलकम बैक टू द यूट्यूब चैनल मेडिकोस फैक्ट्री सो इन द अर्लियर सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस एडिनर्जिक एगोनिस्ट वेरियस ड्रग्स लाइक एड्रीनालिन नो एड्रीनालिन डोब्यूटामाइन एंड ऑल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द फर्दर एडिनर्जिक एगोनिस्ट सो डू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल इन केस ऑफ द डाउट प्लीज यूज द कमेंट सेक्शन एंड वट द थिंग्स प्रोवाइडेड हियर आर वेरीफाइड the content is verified by various faculty and then provided to you so you can use for your university exams as well you can prepare your notes as well and if you like the content please like the video and share so that other students too can avail the benefit because it is free of cost so let's start with the next session so today's drug is dopamine which we are going to discuss so what is dopamine it is agonist on d1 receptor that causes renal vasodilation and increases efr so dopamine receptors are of five type d1 to d5 there are five kind of dopamine receptors in which d1 is responsible for the renal vasodilation so when you insert the dopamine it will cause renal vasodilation leading to increase in the gfr that is glomerular filtration rate it is agonist on beta 1 receptor and as the beta 1 action is there so it increases the heart rate as well and it is agonist on alpha 1 receptor as well and hence it will increase the blood pressure this we have seen already in the adrenaline uses in the anaphylactic shock where the heart rate was increased by beta 1 and same was by alpha 1 where there was increase in the bp because of in the anaphylactic shock the condition is hypotension so you can recall and remember this way and dopamine is inserted or administered in the form of intravenous only okay so this is introduction next what are the actions on the heart at low doses acts mainly on the beta 1 receptors of heart so receptors present in the heart first when you give the low dose the effect will be seen over there so what is the effect it increases the myocardial contractility there is a property of cardiac muscle which you have already learned in the physiology that is ability of heart to contract then it increases the cardiac output and it increases the heart rate this everything is possible at low doses okay remember what in the blood pressure when you give a moderate dose what are the changes you will see in the blood pressure it generally acts on d1 adrenergic receptors that is dopamine one and hence vasodilation as we have already seen but of renal mesenteric and coronary blood vessels it will do the vasodilation and due to that again there will be increase in the gfr and urine output in the entire process the mean bp that is after the systolic and diastolic which we measure that remains unchanged so you will not see any kind of change in the mean blood pressure so this is the effect when we see in the blood pressure what is the effect in the lungs there will be no bronchodilation clear because this mainly acts on the beta 1 and the bronchodilation is associated with the property with the beta 2 receptor so this was about dopamine now what are the uses of dopamine when you can use this drug or in which condition you can administer this drug in the cardiogenic shock due to surgery you can use in that in the mi myocardial infarction in the traumatic conditions in the septic shock that is the where there is the infection in the entire body causing the organ failure and along with the organ failure it create the condition of hypotension that is septic shock heart failure and renal failure in the, all these conditions you can administer the dopamine what are the adverse effect of dopamine one is arrhythmias that is irregular beating of heart tachycardia angina that is chest pain hypertension because you know it already acts where there increase in the blood pressure due to alpha 1 and extravasation of drug causing necrosis that is death of the cell at the injection site what is extravasation that is a leakage 
leakage of fluid leading to necrosis that is cell death another are nausea vomiting headache these all are the adverse effects so this was about dopamine now we'll next drug which we are going to discuss is dopexamine these all drugs are similar only but are variously classified like directly acting indirectly acting mixed acting symphetomimetic drugs now what is dopexamine it is the agonist on the beta 2 receptors now already i have told that you first clear all the receptors their locations their effects then only you will be able to remember and recall all these drugs and their actions okay it inhibits reuptake of dopamine and noradrenaline when i was discussing the neurogenic or uh, the transportion of these drugs adrenergic drug at that time we have seen vam t2 and all where from the cytoplasm or storage vesicle the reuptake noradrenaline and transfer to storage vesicle same way the process happens for the dopamine and noradrenaline and this is the action of dopexamine so whenever you administer dopexamine you will see this thing what are the uses in which condition you can administer dopexamine in the case of heart failure in the case of septic shock so you will see that various drugs like dopamine and various drugs are which you can use in the heart failure and all but as per the conditions and doctor's knowledge and the priority they use the drug it is not like that that if everyone is using dopamine then it is only best it depends upon various factors like bioavailability and all the factors side effects and then as per the hospital rules and doctor's knowledge they choose the drug okay adverse effect is tachycardia and hypotension that it will decrease the blood pressure okay whereas the dopamine adverse effect was increase the blood pressure you can compare and recall so it will be easier for you to remember next drug which we are going to discuss is phenol dopa it is agonist on again d1 receptors so somewhere vasodilation will be there see is a vasodilator drug and used as slow iv in severe hypertension with renal dysfunction so when there is a renal failure associated with hypertension that is low bp and this both conditions are seen you can give in the form of iv but dosage should be slow what are the adverse effect headache tachycardia palpitation hypotension it is already used for hypotension but still you can sometimes see now next drug which we are going to discuss is phenylephrine so it is a selective alpha 1 agonist somewhere alpha is there so various kind of like increase in the blood pressure and all what are the actions it decreases the intraocular tension by ciliary body contraction so it is at the level of i because we have seen now that alpha 1 causes the mitriasis and at the level of ciliary epithelium 2 okay so what is the other action it releases the noradrenaline when you administer phenylephrine it releases noradrenaline due to which it causes vasoconstriction was already alpha 1 agonist and as the vasoconstriction is there it increases the peripheral vascular resistance it is also known as pvr what is pvr it is the resistance that push blood in the circulatory system and maintain a blood flow what does it pushes and maintain blood flow and the resistance offered in such way it is known as pvr and due to this there will be the increase in the blood pressure there is all i did told that is alpha 1 so the action will be increasing the blood pressure what are the uses in which conditions you can administer one is mitriatic which i already told on the upper side and it is also used as nasal decongestant so this was all about phenylephrine now which are another drug similar to phenylephrine one is methoxamine and mefentermine so you can use write the entire same things in the exam if any of these drugs is asked because three of these drugs will have same effect okay next is selective beta 2 agonist used in the case of bronchial asthma what are that beta 2 receptors causes bronchodilation vasodilation and it is also used as uterine relaxants now what are the classification of beta 2 agonist 
let's see one is short acting beta 2 agonist that is saba which is used in the case of bronchial asthma you will discuss this when there will be the drugs used in the bronchial asthma in the respiratory system this is just the highlights for this chapter so in the case of saba the first drug is salbutamol which is also known as albuterol it is given in the form of inhalation in a meter dosed inhaler that is md i or orally in which case in the case of acute asthma so when there is acute asthma you can use salbutamol another drug that is it acts within the 15 minute and the effect lasts for 3 to 4 hour and what is mdi it is a small device that delivers a measured amount of medication to your lungs clear next is levalbuterol it is the enantiomer of albuterol so it is having the same effect like salbutamol and it is also used in the case of acute attack of asthma and copd next is terbutalin it is a rapid and fast acting it is also given in the form of inhalation in the case of acute asthma and status asthma because in status system medicus it is given in the form of iv what is this condition where there is acute severe asthma in which beta 2 agonist therapy which we are giving is not responsive in the patient so beta 2 therapy is also getting failed that is status system medicus next is phenoterol nowadays this is not used due to the incidence of high death condition so this drug is nowadays not preferred this was the classification of saba so next drug is laba that is long acting beta adrenergic drugs first is salmetrol it is more selective to beta 2 agonist than salbutamol more preferred why because its duration of action is 12 hours compared to them which was already short this long and it is used in nocturnal asthma and it is used in the combination with the case of copd so these all are the uh, various various classification which you have to remember because whenever the respiratory system will be discussed at that time it will be helpful to you and what is nocturnal asthma that is the asthma that exacerbate at the night the symptoms indicates at the night clear what are the adverse effects palpitation tremors the tremors means the shaking of hands and nowadays there is a risk of fatal and non fatal there when the salmeterol is given with, along with the corticosteroids corticosteroids are anti inflammatory drugs so a black box warning is given it is nowadays in the front of the drug when there is any kind of black box warning in any kind of drug then black box warning is given where salmeterol formoterol is used when inhaled corticosteroids fail to achieve good asthma control at that time it is given and what is fatal non fatal non fatal is in the case of injury or accident where it causes death clear uh next we will discuss is formoterol which is also a black box warning drug and it is used in the asthma and prophylaxis of exercise exercise induced asthma prophylaxis means the treatment plan what will you treat it is used in exercise in the asthma and copd and next is erfometrol it is also an enantiomer of formoterol and it is also used in copd in asthma so this was about laba now next is very long acting first is indacaterol which is used in asthma and copd it is fast onset and longer duration of action and next is vilanterol it is used in the combination along with the corticosteroids and olodeterol which is given once daily to the copd pa patient along with the combination of teotropium bromide which is an anticholinergic drug so this was about the drugs used in the bronchial asthma beta adrenergic agonist so next drug we will discuss is isoxuprin and ritodrin it is orally effective beta 2 receptor agonist what are the actions already we have seen introduced next as a uterine relaxation effect and salbutamol which is also used in the case of bronchial asthma but is also used in the case of uterine relaxant what are the uses dysmenorrhea 
that is menstrual cramps and threatened abortion what is threatened abortion in which the doctor can see the chances of miscarriage where there are higher chances it is known as threatened abortion what are the adverse effects tremor tachycardia and hyperglycemia that is high blood sugar level and hypokalemia that is the low potassium clear next drug mira background it stimulates beta 3 receptors in the dead tissue muscles of bladder so what are the actions it is used in sorry it is causes dead uh, tissue muscle relaxation and increases the bladder capacity mainly it acts on the bladder muscles so what are the uses it is used in the case of overactive bladder or urinary inconsistency and in both the cases you can give mira background what are the adverse effects hypertension urinary tract infections tachycardia hypertension already we have said and headache and what are the contraindications in which conditions you should not give liver and renal failure or renal dysfunctions so this was all about today i hope this session is helpful to you so do subscribe the channel and again the next part will come soon which will be the last part of the adrenergic drugs so do like the content and if you have any doubt please use the comment section thank you have a nice day